We're live. I'm really early tonight, guys. Sorry about that. Normally, I like to go at about six or so. I didn't plan on going tonight till six, but my buddy Dave just sent me a message, and they happen to have an extra ticket for a, a gun banquet they're going to tonight. So, the manly part of Big Sean says, "Huh? Should I go have some drinks?" Maybe win a gun, or should I just hang out home and wait till six? And so anyway, you you obviously know what I'm doing. So we're gonna cover, we're gonna knock this out early. Um, and but like you guys know, the good part of this is it's always gonna be in our YouTube channel. All these sessions that I'm going over, um, all the ones we've done so far this week, they're on the YouTube channel. You can watch them anytime. You can also watch them here on the Facebook channel as well. So. Today we're going to cover, we're in session five, and we're going to cover the spit note and the spit moan, okay? Now it's not, it's not a note that I think you necessarily need to have um, to kill Canada geese, not at all. So if you're not an expert at clucking and moaning, and you're not real good at getting those clean and steady and putting stuff together like that, I wouldn't even worry about this. You don't have to do a spit note. I'm just covering this because a lot of guys want to know how to do it. So, therefore, I'm going to cover it. Now, let me turn on my speaker. A spit note, I would say, and Brennan even said it last night, a spit note is probably one of the hardest notes to learn. It's not necessarily because it's a complex note. It's just you have to have major, major air control when you're blowing a spit note. Um, let me see if I can, I did, I got a real soft spit note on here. I found, um, some audio on, Let's see if we can find it and you can hear it. It's just that little soft spit note. In a spit note, one more time. Okay. A spit note is nothing more, honestly, is nothing more than a modified cluck. Okay, so here's a cluck. Spit note. Okay, cluck. Spit note. And, like the cluck or all these other notes, once you learn how to do it, there's a bunch of different renditions. High pitch, low pitch, fast. You can draw it out into a moan. You can do a couple of them, high and low. So, the spit note, geese do it a lot. But it's, it's very hard for a natural human ear. When I've been out recording geese and listening to them, usually when you hear the geese do a spit note sound, it's a spit moan when they're taking off. It's usually a paired up geese or a flock of geese. You'll hear one of them, um, usually, usually the big male. He's got his head up and he's shaking his head and he's getting ready to go. And, oh, oh. So you guys understand. So usually when you actually hear the spit note, it's with a spit moan. Okay, so the beginning part of this, let's just cover this. I haven't had time to review this or nothing. I was going to wait till six, but so the spit note again, it's a modified cluck. Your tongue's in the same spot, same position, same air as a cluck. <coughs> cluck, right? <coughs> spit note. <coughs> you can use, I would suggest using the back part of your tongue. To cut the air off to do kahut like uh k use the word k 
um, K A whatever K Hut K Hut, and you can say t, kind of a T, but without moving the tip of your tongue. You use this part of your tongue to cut the air off, so your tongue's flat. And to do the k, to jump start it to make the spit sound, use the back part of your tongue. K, 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 or cut like you're cutting scissors, but without the T, it's K Hut. There's two parts to the spit note. There's a spit part, and then there's the cluck, or the spit, and then the moan. So the spit comes from k, k. You make the reed jump. You hit k, k hut, k hut, k hut, k hut, k hut. And when you go ut, your tongue moves forward, just like you're cutting off with a cluck, right? So it starts different. It starts almost how you end a moan, by cutting off this sound back here in this part of your tongue. But it ends... The same way that you end a cluck. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So it's kaha, 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 So your tongue's going, it's touching back here. Kaha, kaha, kaha. So the beginning, it's, it's, it's very hard to learn because you got to get the reed to break over and have air control to stop it, and you don't want it sloppy. It's a lot of air control in this one. Cuh, hut. <coughs> so there's the beginning. <coughs> it doesn't sound like anything until you put the second part on the note. Cut, <coughs> cut. <coughs> 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 Come on down, Bones. Bones wants to come down and join us. But, it's, again, like all these other notes, tip of the tongue, it's staying right there. It's not moving. So your tongue's flat, kind of like uh, kind of how we were showing it yesterday here. Your tongue's back like this. So the k part, the beginning of the spit note, comes from right here, this back part of your tongue. So it's k. It starts here, k, and then r. So it's k, r. Okay, so the whole time though, your tip of your tongue stays anchored right there. Kara, 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 kara. And the faster you get it, the more control you have, it's going to sound better. So, beginning, at the back of the call, the beginning of the note sounds like this. It's two parts to this note, but it's so fast, it's hard to tell that it's two parts. Cut, cut, Good, good. Cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut. Cut, cut. Now you can, some guys, now I'm not telling you to do this, but some guys can do the spit note using more of the forward part of their tongue going tuhut, tuhut. But the problem when you do that, it's a lot of times the call will stick or you'll scratch the call out. That's more like the middle part of your tongue. I prefer to use the back part of my tongue saying ka, ka hut, ka hut, because it's uh, when you hit the ka instead of a T word, it's just it breaks the read over better. And I think it's probably going to be a little bit easier for you guys to learn on. So I would right now stick with ka hut, ka hut. So your tongue's flat, anchored behind, like any other time we're doing notes this week. Tongue's up like this. The k, k, k comes from when your tongue. Touches the back part of your soft palate. Here's a little dangly thing here. Your tongue's about right up here, and you're touching. So to get the spit part, you drop it off your soft palate. Okay. So it's a very fast motion from your tongue going. So this drops down, and then to get the tongue goes forward, and then cuts off again up front. But it's very fast. Like in that audio I just played, here's an example of that. Do that soft spit again. This is when I like to use it real soft times, but. So it's. 
か。So that's a spit note. Spit note, spit cluck, as my buddy Fud calls it. But basically, it's just an amplified, modified cluck with a little bit different beginning. Cut, cut. <laughs> One of the hardest notes to learn how to do because your tongue starts laid back to make the cup part and then jumps forward within a split second. So it's cut, so it's hard to do. Um, while we're covering this, let's cover the spit moan. Um, same kind of deal, same thing, but you usually hear this when uh, geese are getting ready to take off. This is what I was going through earlier. It's, you know, a big, big honker standing there, and he's, you know what they do when they're getting ready to take off. Well, if you don't know, this is what they do. They usually watch their language, their body language. They're, they start standing up, their head starts going back and forth, they do this little twitch, and they're, caw, caw. And when they get up, boy, they just, caw, caw, and they stretch out that spit moan. So I'll try to do an example, my best rendition, of a live goose getting ready to take off and then taking off. start flying away they get softer and you can't hear them more but that's a spit moan <laughs> which is actually in my opinion a little bit easier to do than the actual spit note itself because your tongue stays right back here so like a moan you're using the back part of your tongue so it's starting up right so the difference between spit notes and the other notes is your tongue's actually starting already touching your soft palate. So you got the air cut off. And what makes it spit and makes that jump is when you drop your tongue and that short burst of air comes over your tongue, that makes the reed go Broop! jump up. That gives it the spit sound. So a spit moan is dropping that going and then back up. And it's, your tongue doesn't move as much on a spit moan. So it's and then back up. So your tongue's just like this, like a regular moan. Regular moan. So the spit part before it. And that's a different rendition of a moan. It's, that's more like a train moan, but... <laughs> spit note. <laughs> spit moan. <laughs> or kind of a drug out spit moan. <laughs> and all that is to get that different moan, it's more pressure, and I'm using more the center part of my tongue. When do I use that hunting? Never. Um, I, I can't say never. I've done it before trying to get geese to turn, like when they're out there and you're just trying to hammer on them, get their attention, trying to get them to turn. But again, you're just trying to get their attention. You're just trying to sound like geese on the ground. So you're replicating geese getting up, moving around, flying around when you're doing that sound. So spit moan, it's cool, fun to do. Uh, definitely guys use it on the contest stage all the time um, for a comeback. But in the field, I don't think you need to learn it. But that's how you do it in case you want to know how to do it. Starts tongue up. Ka-ha! 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 All right, now the spit note. That's something you'd use more in hunting, all right? I'm a, I'll blow the uh, next gen Mr. Big for a while, and I'll get a little bit higher pitch. But the spit note is something I like to use in hunting because you can get nice and soft with it. It has a unique sound. Um, if you're hunting with three, four guys, and everybody can call really good or pretty good, and they can all... 
Cluck and moan. Maybe you're over there hitting a spit note. You're just adding variety into the vocabulary you guys have. So again, like a cluck, it can go fast, high pitch. Usually the faster it goes, it's like a cluck. The faster it goes, the higher pitch it's going to be. Slower, it's going to be slowed down and a lot quieter. That's kind of the sequence I was looking for earlier. That's a goose standing there, getting ready to take off, and then taking off and flying. So, I'm going to turn the phone around here, um, and I'm going to show you the air cavity a little bit better. But it's it's a complex note just because how fast your tongue has to go from one position to another, doing the spit note. But really, it's the same tongue positions that you've worked on the last few times for a moan and then a cluck. So you're try to explain this the best way. Your tongue is starting now where it normally stops for a moan back here. This is now where your tongue, this is your start position now. And then you drop that to get the spit part. And then your tongue comes forward, arches up, makes your air cavity smaller. And then you're stopping it the same place you stop a cluck. So it's car, car, but it's fast. It's air control, um, a lot of muscle memory in that tongue. The more you do it, you just got to be sloppy at first, but hold the call. That's real high pitch because I'm not holding over the end, but. Cut, cut. And it's a cool note to learn because once you get it and you're proficient with it, um, sufficient, proficient, man, that's some big words for me, but you'll learn how to bounce it in between other notes even better because it's an easy transition to go into a moan from a spit note. Okay. There's the spit note. A lot of guys want to learn how to do that. It's fun to do. I like doing it. Um, but I don't do it all the time. And it's not going to make or break you in the field. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to kill more geese because you can do a spit note compared to somebody else. If you can't, you know, if the guy beside you can do a cluck nice and sharp and you can do a spit note nice and sharp, it's not going to matter. To a goose, I don't even know if it sounds any different. Just the beginning of notes a little different. Um... I would say it's kind of, nah, I'm not going to go that way with it, but, all right, uh, one more time, I'll do a spit moan, and the same thing, I kind of got this little groove in my, in my tongue, Kuh-hut. I don't know what it looks like on the phone, because I cannot see it, but, Kuh-hut. Kuh-hut. but you start back here, it's, Kuh-hut. 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 for a spit note, it's, car, 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 okay, so on the call, back of the call, little rendition. when you hear geese do it the most is when they're taking off but a lot of times on the water it's just a different rendition or if there's a goose is standing there a normal cluck 
Or you can hit it hard to turn birds around. So it's not going to make or break you. Um, it's fun to do, but it's not one of those notes that you're going to have to learn how to do. I'm sure there's not many guys watching. I know I'm way earlier than normal. So I apologize to you guys that were thinking it was coming later, um, but it's not. We're here right now, and this is what's happening. So a little close up here, my awesome mouth drawing. But same deal, your tongue, this is the tip, right? It's anchored. Mine, mine sits right here on my gum. Some people might sit up further, right? Mine sits right here. To say the word K, like K-H, you use this part of your tongue. So for a spit note, your tongue starts here, touching your soft palate, okay? So then it's K. So you drop it, let air come over, K. And then your tongue goes, Rah. so it's, but it's all one speed and it's very fast now okay that's the spit note okay when you do a spit moan your tongue starts the same place back here but you don't have to push it up you go and then back up so I'll try to grab a call here. So whatever you want to do, but that's how it works right here. For a spit note, your tongue starts here and ends up here. So it starts, ka, and then follow these lines going up. This is a rendition. It's kind of showing how your tongue moves up. And then, you got the small air cavity right here, creating that pressure to make the cluck. But you're cutting off the air right here. Ka, but very fast. Ka, ka, ka. Okay, it's probably hard to understand. But that is how it works. So, oops, I got to rotate my device. My phone's yelling at me. Oop, now it's over the camera there. Um, but it's a cool note. It's fun. You're not going to kill any more geese because you can do it. But it's something fun to add to your vocabulary. Um, good, Charles. I'm glad I helped. Mm, I don't know if it makes, you're asking about, he's asking if it makes a difference between hunting water or in a field. From what I've seen, it, most of the time when you hear geese doing it, they're doing the spit moan. And it doesn't matter if they're on the water or dry feeding, it's usually when they take off. So I think that's why a lot of guys try to use it as a comeback call because it's very natural. Geese do it all the time and it's showing excitement and showing activity going on in your decoy spread or what you're, what's supposed to be live birds. So I don't necessarily think, no, that it matters if you're on water or land. I don't think you'd use it any different. Geese sound the same to me, pretty much on water or land. Um, sometimes on water, they're not as gravelly sounding. They might have a clear throat because they've been drinking water. Uh, but other than that, man, a goose is a goose. No matter where it's at, what it's doing, a large Canada goose is going to sound the same here in Minnesota as it does in Michigan, as it does in Pennsylvania, as it does in Utah and Colorado. It's a big goose. It's a large Canada goose. So they're going to pretty much sound the same. It doesn't matter what they're in or what they're doing. So that is a spit note, guys. So, so far, we've covered, you know, it's... Still, the most important one, though, day one. Having the right mouth cavity, having your air correct, having your tongue in the right place. It's very important. If you don't have that, you got nothing, right? Hey, somebody says, hey, from Canada, eh? Um, so, number one, we covered the, you know, hand position, putting your mouth around the call, making it tight. It's all extremely important. Um, and then, second day, most important note um 
can a person use too much air? Absolutely, Bear. With the uh, with the spitting, a lot of times guys will stick their calls and ground them out because they're they're putting too much pressure into it, and then the reed's locking up. You know, so there's a fine line, and you got to hear that. That cut. Sometimes I, I did it a couple times, just trying to demonstrate and show you guys. Um, yeah, sometimes you can push too much air in it. It's not necessarily too much. It's just not controlled enough. And doing a spit note, you have to have controlled air. Uh, and your tongue's got to be perfect. So definitely you can use too much air. Lay back and open your hand up. Don't cover the end of the call too much. Let that sound come out of there. Don't cover it up. You cover it up, a lot of times it's going to ground out on you. And that reed's going to get stuck down the tone trough. So depends on the call. Depends how it's tuned. So on and so forth. But anyway, on Tuesday we covered the cluck. That's the most important note. I'm telling you what. That is the most important note. So... You know, it's if you were to say, well, what's up, guys? Hey, from Missouri, Misery. What's up, Gerald from Misery? Jack from Ohio. What's going on, boys? Um, I, I would say, yeah. Uh, about how about tuning the call? What about? What do you mean? What? How about tuning it? What do you mean? Like, should you tune it different for a spit note? No, I mean my calls, like say. Like the next gen Bikahuna that I was using most time, um, you can do a spin note just fine on it. But you heard me even lock it down a couple times. If your hand's too far down like this and you're got too much back pressure, you can't let it out. It'll lock itself down because the reed's trying to go, but you can't because there's too much back pressure. So I would say if you have a call and you're locking it up every time, number one, make sure you're using the back part of your tongue. Use the forward part saying tuhut, you're going to lock it up a lot easier. So use the back part of your tongue, and then if you think you're having an issue with it and, you're, and your reed might need something, take a any kind of a sharp object and bend the tip up. Uh, I mean, I'm talking just the tip. Just the tip. Boy, this thing's not focusing. But just the tip of that reed, take that and bend that up. I'm trying to show you guys with two hands. It ain't working worth a dookie. I'm going to bend it, and then I'm going to show it to you guys. So if you take something, just bend that tip up. Okay. Where, how, where's my camera at? Okay, there it is. So you see how that tip of that reed is just bent up? Come on, I can't see anything. Focus. You can kind of see it right there. The, the tip of the reed's bent. So if you're having problems and you think your call sticking or not tuned right, bend just the tip of the reed up. Come on, focus. That's the hard part about doing this on a phone, doing it live. But um, if you think that's part of the issue, bend just the tip of that reed up. Because a lot of times that reed will catch in the tone trough. Um, what's up from Quebec? Hey, Steve from Quebec. Um, good, Dave. Cleaning your calls? You don't have to clean your calls. Are you kidding me? I haven't cleaned my calls on my lanyard for... Pff, I ain't clean them. Run some water through them. Keep blowing them. That'd be fine. I don't clean nothing. I ain't clean my guns hardly, so I definitely don't clean my calls. I have time. Homie ain't got time for that. Okay, so... Day two, we covered the cluck. Three, we covered the hunk, which is elongated cluck. Just something nice to add to your arsenal. Then yesterday was the moan. So 100%, the two most important things are getting those clucks sharp and goosey and getting the moans goosey. You can cluck good and you can moan good and kill all the geese you want to kill. 100%, I promise you, and everybody that has their mind in the right place will tell you the same thing. A lot of these other notes that you hear people doing, um, I'm not saying geese don't do them. Geese, Canada Goose's vocabulary is huge. They make all sorts of noises and do everything. But to kill them and to hunt them, you don't really need all that stuff. Trust me. I, I'm, I know what it, what it takes. It takes good, clear, goosey notes and having a goose rhythm, having the right sound. Not just being able to do all the fancy notes. So we're going to start going over that next week. Um, next week, Monday through Friday, we're going to go over goose rhythm more in detail. Um, talk about 
the sound that you want out of the call once you master these notes and then the pitch you're looking for and then um, definitely the cadences which is the rhythm part um, the definition of a rhythm is the repetitive and notes and, and staggered pauses in between so you want that goose rhythm you want it to sound like a goose what a goose would actually do what's my favorite call brand oh I don't know zinc calls are pretty good they're all right that big Sean guy makes some decent ones I've heard too but what's up from South Dakota Alex so any more questions I'm gonna get on here I'm gonna go try to win a gun at this banquet tonight I guess if I think I know that's what it is. Last year we went and there was I won a I did I actually won a gun last year. I was I think it was the last person or second to last. I won a it was a four ten or twenty gauge with a twenty two on top. It was like an over under type deal. I gave it to my buddy Stelzner, but yeah. I did win last year. What enough to cover my ticket, but um all right guys. Hope everybody uh Everybody has a fantastic night. What's my thoughts on a zinc money maker? They're pretty good. They're 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 nice. They're great, nice calls. They're good. So, all right, guys, have a good night. Sorry I was early tonight. Um, a lot of you guys will probably catch this later and be like, ah, oh, crap, I missed them live. It's my fault. My bad. I gotta go have fun instead. So, this will be loaded up on the YouTube channel later tonight, and get on there and watch it there. So. Hope everybody has a great night. Just remember, God is good. Work hard, pray hard, and we'll see you next week when we start dipping into some more advanced and some more fun things. So, have a good night, guys.